travel lessons online okay we're going to be moving into a new realm of geography okay uh, we're still looking at human job of course okay but this is going to be looking at team two okay currently everything that's on my channel so far before this video okay before this video um, I've only covered Team 3 stuff, which is also part of human geography, but you're yeah, looking at sustainable development, okay, as well as sustainable urban development in Team 3. Okay, in Team 2, we're looking at development okay, of, of countries, of economies, okay, and then we're also going to be looking at how are resources being employed, okay, things like your resource curse, your resources such as water, okay, and other, other resources that that we'll be going through, all right? So we're starting off the series with part one, okay? I'm going to be following your uh, syllabus document, all right? And we're going to be first looking at core periphery model. Okay, after this, we're going to look at dependency theory and then your bottom-up approach. So those will be the next two parts of... Um, of the next two videos basically. Okay, in this video, I'm going to be looking at core periphery model, which I think a lot of you guys... Um, for some reason struggle with okay because it's actually not very difficult okay once you understand the, the, the gist of it um it is quite manageable okay i would say okay so let's go in first okay what is the core periphery model okay let's clear up some air okay and see whether we can define what this is okay the core periphery model essentially was invented by this um professor okay he's called john friedman Okay, he's an honorary professor in the School of Community and Regional Planning. Okay, and basically what he sought to do, okay, with this model, okay, was actually to show how development is, um, or how development will be like, okay, in the long run, okay, as a result when there's economic growth. Okay, so the model sought to show that when economic growth is sustained over long periods of time, okay, its incidence works towards a progressive integration of the space economy. So what he did with this model is to show that as time progresses, okay, as different economies start to grow, um, you will start to realize that the less developed countries and the more developed um, economies okay, will start to form this um, system, okay, whereby they will, they will start to become interconnected. Okay, and they will start to rely on each other for trade, for resources, for intellect, everything. Okay, they will start to progress into this one um, economy that everyone works together. Okay, so currently, um, you realize that every country is still on its own. Yes, we have things like free trade, okay, but it's not exactly 100% um, integrated yet. Okay, so the model is actually broken down into four stages. Okay, we'll look at these four stages in this slide. Okay. So the four stages, um, basically stage one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll dive into each stage after this. Um, this is basically a, a, a visual representation, okay, of what the um, the different stages look like. Okay, whereby a circle, for example, this circle over here, it will basically represent, <coughs> okay, it will basically represent an economy. Okay, so this could be a core, it could be a periphery. Okay, you realize that as the stages go down, okay, the core would tend to take the bigger circle over here. The periphery would no longer have that circle, it would just become one dot. Okay, so there'll be a few peripheries around this core. Okay, and then after that stage three, you'll see that the periphery sound then start to develop. Okay, they start to have this circle around them. Okay, and these circles basically represent that there are certain things coming in, certain things going out. Okay, so in this case, then you realize that the core still remains. Okay, but they are kind of like these sub cores. Okay, but they are no longer peripheries yet. The periphery still exists. Okay, the peripherals, okay, which are these smaller dots over here, they still exist. And lastly, when you move on to the fourth one, you realize that everyone will have their own circle. Okay, it means that uh, most of the countries, um, whether they were periphery or whether they were a core, okay, would have somewhat developed and they now require each other to survive or either that they are all basically integrated now. Okay, let's look at stage one. So stage one, okay, it is your independent local centers. Okay, what this means is very simple. Okay, this was actually pre-colonial stage. So before um, all your different governments came to play and everything, okay, this is pre-colonial. Okay, what happens is that there were a series of isolated, self-sufficient local economies. So basically, every country is basically um, um, all for themselves. Okay, so everyone just works on their own thing. They basically um, talk to each other in their own economy, but they never ever go out. Okay, to actually connect with other economies. Okay, everything is done on the on 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 their own. For example, China would produce their own food. They eat their own food. Okay, they would um um produce their own clothes and then use their own clothes. I was gonna say eat their own clothes. <laughs> okay, yeah, but essentially what that, that that that's basically what it means. Okay, so these independent local centers would produce and consume their own resources and products alike, and there is basically no trade. Okay, or any sort of communication that would occur with any other economies. Okay, reason being okay, is because this was already pre-colonial stage. So when all these countries had their own villages, their own cities, their own towns, okay, they only um 
they have never ventured out before. Okay, partially okay, because um, technology was was very very um, limited back then. Okay, there were no airplanes to begin with. There was no form of communication. Okay, but these are basically local centers. They still have their own resources, which means that they can own. They can still go on with their everyday needs, their everyday lives. Okay, because they can just produce and consume on their own whenever they want. Alright, so this was independent local centers. It's your stage one. Then we move on into stage two, okay, where there is a single strong center. So one economy will start to grow, okay, somehow with the advent of technology, okay, as they start to develop and, and um, realize that technology is a thing, okay, they will start to be the one that grows in one main region. So there will be this one single strong center that survives, I'm uh, not survives, sorry, that adapts and starts to grow to become stronger. So these um, single strong centers become very strong and what they'll do is they will start to feed okay on the rest of the nation okay or on the rest of the the economies okay um for example okay the extensive periphery um which is basically meaning that um peripherals that are outside of this um nation okay outside of this region okay and then what will happen is this will lead to a downward spiral effect whereby your peripherals which are your smaller economies maybe say your less developed economies which have not broken out to become a single strong center here they start to suffer from a lack of resources and these peripherals development will then be affected as well okay the reason being is these strong single centers okay what happens is that they will want to draw resources okay for example they find that oh in africa okay let's say the resources there are very cheap now okay i will start to um, hunt them down okay, and, and go after their resources for a very cheap price so that I can develop as an economy, as a single strong center. At the same time, their labor is also very cheap, so I'll exploit the labor as well. So that is what these single strong centers do. So as a result, those less developed countries will start to have all these problems of income inequality, exploitation of labor, so they cannot even focus on their own growth and their own development as a result. Okay, so at the global level, okay, developed countries can be seen as the core centers and the less developed countries are seen as the peripherals, like what I just said. Or either that on a national level, okay, an example of one single strong uh, metro, uh, metropolitan okay, would be Bangkok okay, in Thailand. Okay, you realize that in Thailand, okay, out of all the economies, okay, you have got Chiang Mai, you have got Bangkok, okay, you have got um, Phuket, you've got so many different um, kind of like cities or uh, yeah, cities per se but you realize that out of all of them the one that does the most trade the one that's the most developed is Bangkok okay so it shows that they are the strongest center but they don't have all the resources because I mean they are basically a city and we learned in team 3 already right that since they are a city they most likely may not even have many resources of their own so what they'll do is they'll exploit the, the outskirts okay your Chiang Rai Chiang Mai okay all those other um, less developed um, cities per se or villages that still exist within Thailand Okay, they will basically leash onto them for resources, okay, such as their food, okay, or either that labor, okay, but they hire all these labor as cheaper labor because the labor in the city itself of Bangkok is highly skilled and highly demanded. As a result, it's always going to cost more. Okay, so they will start to feed on the outskirts of the country itself. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right, so basically, what what is what, what you're seeing over here is that there is this formation of this very very strong core over here. Okay, this is the core, and these are the peripherals. Okay, so there are a few peripheries. Okay, this one can also be the ones. Okay, what happens is that these peripherals, okay, will actually contribute. Okay, because the core will start to demand for certain resources, certain labor, certain factors of production. Okay, so they will all contribute to this core, and as a result, this core circle, okay, will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Whereas the peripheries, okay, they, or the peripherals, okay, they can't even develop themselves. So they will always remain small and they cannot break out of this um, kind of like curse. Okay? Alright, then stage three. We move on to regional sub-centers. This is kind of like the stage that our society, our world is in today. Okay, regional sub-centers, uh, sub basically what happens is that um, some of these um, peripherals, okay, they break out of the curse, okay, because I say due to strong governance, okay, so because of strong governance, while the core is the single core is trying to feed off them, they also come out to feed back on the core. So you see, it's like wow, it's like Pac Man or something, you know, they are feeding one or, or feeding off one another, okay. So what happens is that some of them can feed back, okay, because of let's say strong governance, so they implement the 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 right policies, okay, by oh, you want my labor, sure, I'll give you labor, but then I want something in return. So in the end, both of them will start to leash off one another, start to eat and feed off one another. But at the same time, they both start to grow. Okay, because as one, let's say if I give you labor, I expect you to give me back money in return. So when you give me back money in return, my GDP will also grow. I'll also face economic growth. Okay, so this is what we start to see as regional sub-centers. Okay, these um, regional sub-centers, basically they receive benefits from this single strong center, the core. 
Okay, so such benefits could be increased supply of resources. So let's say if I give you my labor, I expect maybe say 10 apples in return. Okay, such as skilled labor, increased accessibility to knowledge or upgrades in technology. Okay, a lot of these regional sub-centers, for example, Singapore is one very, very clear example is that a lot of our technology derived from the US as well as China, okay, which are basically very, very strong single centers. Okay, what we did is we we, we basically meddle with free trade, okay, as well as um, the whole concept okay, of us because we have, a very, we have a very strong competitive advantage in skilled labor. So when you lend this skilled labor over or let's say you trade, okay, you trade all these, you expect back something return so Singapore does that through technology so that way we can also improve our own te- um, technology levels and everything and we ourselves will develop okay that is the reason why we are now known as a newly industrialized country okay these are basically your regional sub centers so picture wise okay, this is how it looks like so your peripherals that were once over here have now started to develop okay because while yes we are indeed giving the core certain of our own resources and factors of production okay what happens is that now we expect something in return so that these cores would then have to also return something over joy in blue okay they also start to have to return something to us as a result we will also start to grow as a small little peripheral a small peripheral Okay, we start to grow to become bigger and bigger and bigger as the core also starts to grow. Okay, so these are known as your sub peripherals. Okay, in the economy, you're known as NIC or NIEs. Okay, newly industrialized countries, newly industrialized economies. Okay. Then lastly, we move on to stage four. So stage four is what happens when you have the most ideal, the perfect scenario, okay? Whereby everyone has started to become interdependent. So everyone is trading with one another. Everyone is very, very happy. Everyone is growing together as an entire global economy. Okay, so this is a result in a smaller gap between the core and peripherals. So for instance, examples would be free trade, free mobility of factors of production, um, amongst the core and peripherals, free exchanging of knowledge and technology. Okay, whereby each different country, whether you're a core, whether you're a peripheral, whether you're a developed country, whether you're a less developed country, will be able to value add to one another regardless of the level of development. So this is the most ideal situation. We have not reached this stage yet. We're slowly inching there, but because you realize that in today's society, you still have a lot of economies which haven't exactly broken out of the curse, right? Like Africa, like India, okay? I mean, India is slowly becoming an NI, NIC, okay? But you, have, you still have certain countries, okay, which are unable to get out of this poverty cycle, get out of this um, peripheral um, state of, of development. Okay, as a result, we have not actually achieved or attained this stage four yet. Okay, so this is what it looks like with your integrated system. The sub peripherals will continue to grow bigger and bigger. But now your peripherals will also be able to trade and be able to um, feed off okay, your sub peripherals and feed off okay, your, your core itself. Okay, so this is when everyone is integrated. You're trading with one another. You're doing things with one another as a whole economy. And this is what John Friedman actually um, said we, are, we will move towards in the future. Okay, when everyone becomes um, integrated and everyone becomes interdependent. Okay. So an evaluation of this model, okay, so evaluation is always very important, okay, for this uh, model as well as your dependency theory and your bottom-up approach. Okay, this model is highly centered on less developed countries. You realize that, right? The peripherals, okay, we're always talking about the the peripherals being exploited, right? They're always um, um, being exploited by the, the core regions, but we never actually acknowledge whether they have actually receive any benefits. Okay, for instance, the core exploiting labor, it does provide cert, um, these peripherals with increased employments, right? Increased jobs. So that could also be a good thing. Okay, but the, this model actually never ever considered that part that part of the argument. Okay, so it is somewhat biased and favors the core regions a lot more. Okay, and it neglects efforts and ways in which the less developed countries can possibly value add. For instance, through, let's say, um, value adding in their own economy through increased employment. Okay, we did that for, for some of them to maybe come over to your country and do other things as well, such as increase your, your business or increase trade, um, buy more of your imports. Okay, we never actually consider that in this model. So there's also an, an inherent criteria that was built into the model, okay, but it is assumed that the state intervention is present, it is needed and effective. Okay, when in reality, this may not actually be true. Okay, reason being is because of imperfect information Okay, as well as a possible case of um, weak governance, okay, or either that ineffective governance in certain economies. Okay, some economies, the governance may not exactly say be perfect. Okay, as a result, um, they may not even be able to break out, okay, of their peripheral to begin with. Okay, whereas in this model, we're assuming that all governance, all governments have done the right thing, they're doing very well. That's why you have got NIEs and everything. Okay, it's not always true. 
Okay, so exam requirements. Alright, so what do you need to know for this topic? What do you need to study and what do you need to answer? Okay, it's very simple. Explain how the four stages, basically the of um your stage one and stage four just now we've gone through already. Okay, explain how it works. Okay, and evaluate the pros and cons of modeling the world after this model. Okay. This model aims to show you development over the long term. Okay, it aims to show you how the core okay, has leashed off the peripherals and how some peripherals have broken out of this um, curse okay, to actually become much stronger as their own country. Okay, so you want to see, okay, is this actually a good thing or is it a bad thing? Has this model actually shown this in today's world? And what has it neglected? Okay, has this has it neglected anything that the peripherals have done okay, to maybe value add to the overall global space economy as well? Okay, that's what you're going to be looking at. Okay, after that, you may you may re- be required to compare with the dependency theory and bottom-up development approaches in your essays. So be be ready to to strike a balance. Okay, to see which out of these three um development theories okay, is actually the strongest. Okay, I would say that a bottom-up approach is always the best. Okay, um, or bottom-up development. Okay, is always the best way in terms of ensuring that development succeeds. However, it may not always. I mean, it does have its have its negatives, which I'll go through next time. Um, whereas this and dependence, dependency theory are very very fluffy okay they are not exactly say concrete and they do um they can be quite unrealistic in in certain areas okay so that is what you're going to be assessing for these um development theories okay i'll be going through dependency theory and bottom-up approach in the next two videos to come so not to worry okay if you did um find any um questions with this topic okay or you're unsure of certain things okay leave a comment in the section below i will answer them as well um if not that's actually all i have okay for core periphery model it's not exactly the hardest i feel okay it's quite um, straightforward to understand i would say dependency theory is maybe the um, slightly harder one okay but i put it so quite simple okay so we'll look at those two later on not to worry um if not that's all i have yeah so if you did enjoy this video okay be sure to give it a like it really does help me out a lot as well as to subscribe to the channel okay and, and let me know if um, if any questions. Alright, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.